Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will show you how to activate the fuel injectors and ignition system of an engine control unit or ECU right here on the workbench. We will make the ECU work just like it does when it is installed in the car. The engine control system is one of the busiest systems in a vehicle. It operates under very harsh conditions. That's why it is also one of the systems that fail most often. Testing and understanding how this system works on the ECU is very important. It helps us find the right direction for diagnosis and repair and fix problems faster. Among all ECU testing steps, activating fuel injection and ignition is usually the most difficult part. Many people find it hard, especially when they don't have the right practice equipment. To perform this test, we need two main conditions. First, the IMMO system, also known as the immobilizer or anti-theft system. Almost all modern cars have it. The IMMO is synchronized with the car's key and other control units. Because we can't bring the whole car to the workbench, we need a way to bypass or temporarily disable the IMMO system. Second, we need a signal generator. This device creates fake signals that simulate the crankshaft and camshaft sensors. The ECU uses these signals to control fuel injection and ignition. These signals must have a missing pulse pattern, exactly like the original sensor signal. If the signal is wrong or if it has no missing pulse, the ECU will not recognize it. Even a small timing error can cause the ECU to inject or fire incorrectly. For older cars, the MO system is not common. Many old ECUs can work as long as we provide power and the right sensor pulses. But for modern cars, almost 100% of them have IMO. So we must find a way to turn it off or bypass it before testing. To do this, we use special software to disable the IMO function temporarily. In some cases, if the IMO is seriously damaged and the car owner agrees, we can remove it completely. This helps the car start again and reduces repair cost. However, after removing IMO, the vehicle becomes less secure and easier to steal. So always get the owner's clear permission before doing that. If you need IMO off software, you can contact me. I can provide it for a small fee and give you technical support to help you use it correctly. Besides the software, you also need a device to read ECU data. Only after reading the data can we safely modify it with the software. For the hardware, you can use clone tools from China. They are inexpensive and good for learning or research. They are available on online marketplaces like Amazon or AliExpress. Or you can buy them directly from me. I have already tested and selected reliable tools. I will also provide support when you buy from me. At the moment, I don't have an online shop, so please contact me directly through Gmail or my Facebook fan page. You can find the links in the video description. Now about the signal generator. The ECU needs crankshaft and camshaft signals to activate fuel injection and ignition. These signals include a missing pulse so that the ECU can identify position. If the signal is not accurate, the ECU will not work properly. So we need a precise signal generator. Cause the waveform structure is quite complex and there is a delay section in the signal to simulate the missing teeth on the camshaft and crankshaft wheels, it is very difficult to build this kind of signal generator circuit by yourself. Here I have a very useful signal simulator. It can generate six different channels, three hall type signals and three ME type signals. Uh, you can program each channel to match the sensor signal of many different car brands. It can store up to 60 signal profiles. If you need one, you can contact me for details. If you know how to program, you can even build your own signal generator using an STM32 microcontroller board. These boards are very cheap 
and easy to find on online marketplaces. They are great for students or anyone who wants to experiment. To summarize, there are two main things we need to make the ECU work on the bench. First, disable or bypass the IMO system. Second, provide accurate simulated crankshaft and camshaft signals. Once these two conditions are met, the ECU will start operating. Today, I will demonstrate with an ECU model M7.9.8 from Kia and Hyundai. This one already has the MO function turned off. To perform the test, we also need some load simulation tools. Today, I am using four relays connected in parallel with one LED. This setup simulates the injectors and creates a clicking sound similar to an engine running. Remember, always connect the LED through a one kilo ohm resistor to protect it from damage. To simulate ignition coils, I also use four LEDs, each connected through a one kilo ohm resistor. You can switch the setup if you like use LEDs for injectors or use relays for ignition coils. It depends on what you have available. Here, I only use four relays. If you use too many, the noise will overlap and be hard to hear clearly. You can also add another bulb to simulate the fuel pump signal because the pump usually operates together with the injector and ignition circuits. Before sending signals to the ECU, you need to know what type of sensor signal it uses, whether it's ME type or Hall type, and what the pulse pattern looks like. You can find this information in the manufacturer's documents or online. The ECU I'm using here reads ME type signals. The crankshaft wheel has 60 teeth with two missing. That means 58 pulses followed by a two pulse gap. So our simulated signal must generate 58 pulses and then skip two pulses to match that missing part. When testing the ECU, connecting only the crankshaft signal is usually enough. The ECU will recognize it and activate the injectors and ignition. You don't always need to connect the camshaft signal. Once all the tools are ready, check the wiring diagram carefully. Connect the power supply. Connect the simulated loads. Then start generating the sensor signals.
This is the LED light I use as a dummy load for the fuel pump signal. The principle is simple. When we turn on the ignition key, the fuel pump receives power and it builds up enough pressure in the fuel line, ready for the engine to start. This signal will stay active for a few seconds and then it will turn off automatically. Now, we will supply power to the pulse simulation circuit. As you can see, when the sensor signal appears, our ECU starts activating the injector and ignition control signals regularly. By observing this, we can easily check if the ECU has a fault in any injector or ignition control circuit. This helps us find the problem more accurately. In fact, activating fuel injection and ignition from the ECU is not difficult. The real issue is that we often don't have the right tools to practice and perform the tests properly. Having the correct equipment is very important for this kind of work. So please try to prepare and collect all the necessary tools and devices. If you need advice, feel free to contact me directly. I'll leave my contact information in the description below this video. Thank you so much for watching my channel. See you again in the next videos. Goodbye.